Hi guys, PJ here. Today we are removing the stereo from a 2002 BMW E46. Uh, to do this job you are going to need a few bits and bobs, some parts, and those parts consist of one wiring harness adapter, PC254, made by Autoleads. This particular radio that's going in is a DAB radio, so it's going to need a DAB antenna. We are using a windscreen mount one, which is DABAA1, as you can see, and also a plastic fascia adapter which is FP0604. Now we've already installed the DAB antenna. There we go, on the side of the window. Basically it's just a wire, run it down the edge of your, your trim under the dashboard and uh, I've got the cables just poking out here ready. This particular radio also is Bluetooth, so it's got a microphone which I've popped just up on the top of the headlining. But on to the main event, to uh, actually remove the, the radio on this. Quite a simple, straightforward operation. You're going to need some sort of plastic leverage tool, such as this Bojo tool I use here. I use this on quite a lot of installations. If you haven't got one of these, some sort of thick plastic scraper will suffice. Do not use a metal screwdriver. You will, or should I say, could damage the trim. If you're in the slightest bit concerned about fitting your own radio or removing this one, then obviously seek professional advice or take it to a professional and pay them to do the job. However, if you are proceeding with it yourself, this is how you do it. Start by getting your plastic removal tool underneath. There we go. All the way along. I have actually loosened this slightly prior to this video because obviously doing everything one-handed is a bit of a chore. When you take it out, you should be left with those red holes yeah they're on like pegs look now sometimes the little red hole sections these can come out of the trim and they'll stick on the peg here if it does do that just get a pair of pliers and pull it off the peg shove it back in the hole yeah noting that they go long ways on okay when you've done that put your trim safely to one side and then you're going to want to remove this bit same sort of principle get your plastic pry tool pop it underneath yeah one size just completely popped off look and ease it out this corner can be tricky take your time just keep working it and it will come out there we go again another peg on the end of it little red thing is still in there the little grommet let's put that safely out of the way this gives you access to the actual screws that hold the unit in now you've got one here phillips head cross head screw and another one here on the other side go ahead and remove those now and with those removed from each side, you should be able to wiggle the stereo and pull it forwards. Now you don't want to scratch anything below here, um, so you could just put a, a foam pad in the way there, and obviously a little bag over the gear lever if you're going to hit it. Now I'm going to show you a quick tip when fitting your new radio, if there's a lot of stuff to fit behind it. I'll show you shortly. Okay, so there's the back of your radio. You've got a sort of quad lock connector which is a straightforward one to get off they can be sticky because obviously they've been in a while by now if it's the original radio still get yourself a flat blade screwdriver and what you do is pop it underneath here and it comes up look you see that it actually raises up yeah some are trickier than others and some take a lot of wiggling to get off there you go pull it up and it will literally fall off there's the holes and the pins this is a FACRA aerial connector so it's just got a push tab on the side here squeeze the tab and it'll pop off like so okay now these cars don't have much room at the back here for aftermarket radios for all the wiring extensions and stuff so what you can do is take out the heater panel here which just literally just put your hand in and pop behind it you'll feel some plastic there we go just pull it forwards look like so you've got a big gap now there's a piece of plastic here. Sometimes if I'm putting in a big radio that's got a lot of outputs, you can actually cut the plastic along here and along here. So take the L shape out that, I, that I've got in my hand. Sometimes you don't need to, depends on the radio. We'll see with this particular radio if I have to or not. So on with fitting the radio. Okay, so this particular radio has needed the piece of plastic removed. And there we go, there it is, it would normally sit that way on so we've removed that and what that means is we can now push all these cables down behind the heater nice and easily like i say you don't have to do this it's just if you're fitting something with a lot of wiring behind it and it won't shove back and fit neatly so uh, there we go like i say it's, it's nothing it doesn't support anything it's uh, still going to fit nicely and everything but it just gives you that little bit of extra room 
it's quite uh, you know quite a step to take but uh, if you want to get your radio in sometimes you do have to do this sort of thing okay so we spent a couple of minutes just feeding our cables up from below there you know the aerial and the microphone etc and uh, we've connected the power to the uh, DAB aerial which goes to the blue wire coming out of the loom there the blue wire that's your remote antenna feed basically we've bullet connected that in and we've plugged on the wire that comes with the radio which is just simply a, a push together connect so at this point you're ready to get your BMW uh, adapter block line it up with this and quite literally if I can do it one-handed always good fun come on so if I can do this no, I'm going to need two hands. Basically, you shove it in and then lock it down. Now, as if by magic, with two hands, it goes straight in. So you shove it home and then get the top and click. That's locked on, yeah? That bit can now go out of the way, uh, you know, behind everything. That's one of the big blocks, and that's the reason I made the little gap in the plastic to, to shove the thing down behind the heater, okay? There we go. So you're ready at this point to start fitting your fascia adapter. Uh, your plastic surround. The fascia adapters are nice and simple, just uh, push your wiring through them, slide them up, get them the right way around of course. They are a bit flimsy so just, just be careful of that, you know, you don't want to snap the bottom of it or anything. You notice the locating dowel there, sit that on it, both sides, and that sort of makes the hole the right size to put the radio into. Put your screws back each side that you took out the original radio, so you've got a, a couple of Phillips screws that you can pop back in there. There we go. Both screws are in. Next up is your aerial adapter. Now you get a little stretcher cable like so, yeah, in the box. And it's just quite literally click and it locks in. Yeah, done. Gives you a normal aerial end for your new radio, yeah. So by now, on this particular radio, we've got a microphone, we've got an aerial, we've got a power cable, and we've also got a dab antenna aerial as well. You may not have the microphone or the dab aerial, it depends what radio you fit in. Next up, you're going to need your cage. This comes with the radio, it's normally slid over the radio in the box, so uh, just slide it off and, and uh, basically you're going to feed your wires through it and pop it in there. Okay, so just shove your cage in so it lines up with the edges. Can be a bit stubborn, do each corner at a time, there you go, it's nice and flush so it sits perfectly along the edge there, yeah. All right, once it's in, all the way around and it's flush, yeah, get yourself a little flat blade screwdriver, like so and go to the tabs on the sides or the top and just give them a twist yeah so that they go behind the plastic fascia adapter do the same on the other side you want sort of a few done so it's not going to move around as it were just do a few and all the little tabs that you need to do pushed in so that the, the thing's not going to move you can then get hold of your radio now this may sound a, an obvious thing, but make sure your radio is the right way up. I've seen people fit them upside down and have to take the whole thing out again. So um, on the back, you've obviously got everything that you're going to line up. Your mic, your power connector, your normal aerial and your dab aerial. Go ahead and plug those in. Okay, so we've plugged all the aerials in and the power connector and everything into the back of the radio. Now, you'll notice the wiring to the radio has dropped down in the little you know in the little recess that I made there so push that to one side out of the way that means you can now shove the radio easily home and it will click in nicely like I say you don't have to remove that small piece of plastic from the bottom of the tray that holds the radio but it does help considerably to be able to get your radio in I mean your heater no problem to get that back in it's just a case of getting it in if something is holding it in the way you can sort of push it down the side and get it out of the way Normally you don't have a problem with them. One, two, there we go. Back in as normal, yeah? So that's your heater in. You never unplugged it, so you ain't got to worry about plugs and bits and bobs on it. Next, it's uh, just the reversal of what you did earlier. You get your first piece of trim, your radio trim. Line up that, the red bit with the spike, and give it a bit of a push. Sometimes they're a bit awkward to line up. There we go, in it goes. In. that side's lined up you're going to need your other piece of plastic now to uh, shove onto that all right let's just do this line your little logs up again like i say you've got to line them all up for it to fit in nicely once you've got them lined up just give it a light tap 
there we go and that's all in nice and flush again at this point you're ready to start testing your radio so get the front to it pop it in there looks nice already and we're going to test the memory make sure everything's working okay so to test the memory you're just going to tune in a memory uh, radio station basically make sure it holds it on a preset when you take the key out on this particular BMW, this told to year, you shouldn't have any problems with power or anything like that. It's just a plug and play radio. So we're waiting for the DAB signal to initialize, which can take a while. And there we go. So we can tune that into preset number six. It beeps, locks it in. To turn the key off, there you go. This radio being a Sony will beep to tell me the face you needs to be removed. So that's a reminder so you don't get it stolen. Once that's done, and your power's off, turn the ignition back on again and make sure it comes back on and picks up the radio station that you stored on the end one just give it a sec there because it is dab and there we go that is how you fit a dab radio in a BMW E46 if you've got any questions at all please drop them in the comments below and like I said earlier if any of it worries you in the slightest seek professional advice or go to a reputable retailer and pay them to do the job Okay, with that in mind, if this helped at all, please click like on your way out and thank you very much for watching. Goodbye for now.